What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today I'm taking a look at this gorgeous, gorgeous knife from Shirogoroff. This is the F3 um, green canvas micarta handle with Promax blade. And uh, you know what, it came out at a time that unfortunately didn't meet Halloween, because I think this would have been a beautiful knife to do a bunch of cool kind of Halloween related content with personally. Um, but nonetheless, you don't see a lot of F3s at this price point available. So I'm excited to review it with you guys today, talk about it, do some comparisons in a coffee shop style conversation that we normally do, talk about the knife, and uh, you know maybe make a suggestion, maybe give you guys some new advice, and uh, or otherwise just enjoy it, and uh, you know have your cup of coffee with me and uh, learn something hopefully that's right, about uh, this new Shergorov F3. So I've got a couple of them to, uh, to kind of go through here. I've got this as well as uh, another F3 uh, colorway that I will review, as well as a bunch of other stuff. As a reminder, check out my website, bladezilla.ca. A lot of the knives featured on this channel are available to buy on this website. I just threw up some RJ Martin, the pre-owns, uh, the new Hattie Halloween, which actually missed Halloween as well. Um, but it is available on the site. I think I've got one or two more of those. And then the uh, Chavez RCK9 is also available on there. Don't know much about them, but uh, definitely worthwhile checking out. So there you go. Nice little shout out, bladezilla.ca. That's all I ask. Check out the website. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok. I do a little bit there. Pretty minimal, but uh, I am available. Uh, just chat. As always. So first and foremost, let's get some measurements on this gorgeous knife and see what it is all about. Get some fluff off of it that's there. Okay, that looks good. Alright, let's see here. So, it is a full size knife. Okay, we're coming in at eight and three quarters, maybe a little more than that. Slightly with how that uh sorry, I'm just losing things here. Uh, eight and three quarters, maybe slightly, maybe more. Blade grind on this puppy is a little under four inches, probably three, seven, five sharpened, maybe a little bit more depending. I believe these ones are hand sharpened. Handle length, uh, just under five, four and three quarters, four and seven eighths, something like that. Use your eyes and uh, hopefully get as close to it as you can. In terms of some comparisons, well, I think the primary comparison uh, that we're going to talk about, I've got a few of them here beside me. I don't have the outdoor, but I've got an F3 in the gray and LMAX. And these guys are essentially the same price, okay? And, and I think that if I'm looking in the market at this price point, these are the two that I'd kind of look at. And it kind of comes down to, do I like G10, aka hard plastic, or do I like... Green Canvas Micarta, aka a little grippier, a little color changey as you wear it in and put a little luster into it. Chromax on the Green Canvas and LMAX on the G10. You can go down a absolute rabbit hole of, uh, I think it would be called metallurgy, comparing Chromax and LMAX. They're both very, very similar and um, it's just different vendors essentially, but very, very similar. So those are the two comparisons on the F3s, but uh, I haven't filmed this knife yet. I've got a few of these still kicking around. I will definitely film this probably immediately after I film uh, this other video. But beautiful, you know, G10 backspacer, not titanium or anything like that, not metal, but it is G10 red. And you get some paint on the G10 as well as on the other side here. So it's a good looking knife, uh, definitely hard in your hand grippy as hell and would make a great user with that LMAX. So there's your uh, G10 and I'm sure I'll bring that in at some other point but there's a direct comparison while we're watching. You can kind of see that green canvas color which you know will wear in and kind of shine. Good fit and finish obviously. Okay now some other models and model comparisons. Uh, considering this is a production knife, we're going to compare it with production level knives. So I've got a Hattie here. Beautiful knife. I've got a F95NL. 
Uh, another knife that actually just came in that I will be putting up on the website. This one's a pre-owned one and I will be putting that up for sale ASAP, but you can kind of see comparison in size. Let's get that off. Put that away. Let's grab uh, Quantums. Let's go with a black Quantum. There you go. Nice little size comparison. Everyone always likes the Quantum. It's a beautiful knife. We've got our F95 um, NL inlay with the Crazy Micarta. Looks a lot bigger because of the angle, but also very cool comparison knife. We've got our Quantum G10 uh, multi-row bearing, which is uncommon for an Ursus knife. But there you go. Let's put this guy away. And what else do I have? I've got a Halloween Hattie. I just took some pictures of this, which is beside me. Uh, but there you go, Halloween Hattie. We've already shown another Hattie, but uh, production-wise, beautiful knife. I love that one. And let's go down the line here. What's easily grabbable? I think that's going to be it. Now, we will go in and do a neon as well. Just for a size comparison, and remember it's going to look tiny compared to that F3 just based on the angle. So there's your Neon, and we'll also do a Stellar, which I like to show. You've seen my Stellar in lots of videos. And uh, because I'm feeling fancy, and this came in the door, we will do a Stellaris as well. And there's a difference right there in terms of... Um, the size comparison between the two. These are the same length, these two knives, but look how different they look. I'll show you what I'm saying. Let's, let's just flip them around. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that insane? Uh, that to me is just hilarious how different they look, but there's your size comparison. A couple production knives, a couple uh, custom divisions. This guy, I don't know when I'm going to release this, but I am going to go through it and throw it on the site. Very, uh, very uncommon custom division, Stellaris. Pretty cool, and I love how the CD is just hidden a little bit in the, in the Dama. Beautiful knife. Cool. Anyway. The joys of constantly uh, having knives come and go. Now, let's talk about this one. Oh, you know what? One more. One more knife, guys. Uh, because I have it here, and it is a really cool comparison. I have the RJ Martin green canvas. My card as well. And let's do that. How cool is that as a comparison? Because they're both my carta. And uh, they're actually both the same size. Eh, a little bit different. Close enough though. Super, super cool comparison there. Uh, because you're kind of seeing, uh, you know, this is this is a special edition collaboration knife. It's a collaboration. And uh, the level of detail on this knife, you know, is a little bit different. And, uh, you know, when you're talking a $700 knife versus a, you know, almost $2,000 knife, U.S., um, they're so close in quality, it's, it's pretty crazy, actually. And uh, I love it. But you can kind of see, you know, it's the same type of material in the micarta. So I thought that was kind of cool to show. And obviously, roller bearings. Uh, look and feel incredible. Love them. Could talk about these all day. Um, anyway, so a couple, couple green canvas Micarta brothers. Uh, in terms of this knife, though, so what makes it so cool? What makes it special? What, uh, what makes you consider this knife versus some of the other ones? Well, let's talk about it. So, F3 is not a frame lock. So when I flip it over here, you'll see there's no lock bar exposed. And maybe the best way to show that is with a frame lock. So let's grab a black Hattie. This is my CCKS personal knife. You've probably seen me do a comparison on this in a lot of videos. But there you go. So we have two knives. One has a lock bar. One has a inset liner lock. Or a liner lock. So a little bit different. So when your lock bar is external like this, um, you tend to be a little bit thinner of a knife, in theory, and there are exceptions to every rule, but when you're a liner, you have your tie frame, right? And uh, it's inside this, the uh, the scales. And now that I'm looking at this, it's honestly more of a 
it's like it's almost like a covered frame lock very similar to the rj whereas an inset liner uh, anyway it's the lock bar is internal it just depends on how you look at things but it's essentially it's in it's internal so your over travel stop is going to be you know essentially the frame which is cool uh, all i'm trying to say is that the clip side tends to be a little more pure uh, easier sight lines, just smoother, really good lefty knives. Uh, people love the F3 because you can kind of see the nice swooping ergonomics to it, but also because it's a very lefty compatible knife. Other than you can't flip that pocket clip around, which some people would really love, uh, which is why you could get like an F3 outdoor that doesn't even have a pocket clip, but anyway, that's a different story. Uh, with this, you get green canvas micarta, looks great. You get the orange kind of paint uh, on the pivot. I don't know if there's actually G10 there. I can't really, no, no, that's G10, it's not paint. There is a bit of a G10 insert there. Uh, and I never noticed that. I always thought it was just painted. Is the other one the same way? Or is that just paint as well? No, that's, uh, that's pressed in there, huh? That's pressed in G10, that's cool, I didn't know that. I always thought that was just kind of a color combo thing. And the detail so they must press it and then machine it after super cool so that's a, that's a pressed in piece of g10 uh, for the pivot we've got a g10 orange backspacer which looks awesome um, really loud color but still subtle and will definitely blend in over time because that's going to get dirty let's be honest orange doesn't like to hide dirt very well uh, fit and finish, done very, very well, as, as you'd expect. Tight, tight tolerances. Micarta, you know, sometimes, even on the uh, F95 NL, Micarta, you can, like, when you really get in there close and look at it, you can see mistakes. And it's because when you're, when you're kind of doing some work on it, you get these fraying little ends that kind of pop out every now and then over time. So don't, don't get bent out of shape if you get a knife like an F95 NL that has a little bit of micarta, like some weave that's popping out. It's not a big deal. It's going to happen as you wear and break in a knife. Just because it's a, it's a material, essentially. But otherwise, the titanium frame, beautifully done. Matches quite well. The clip... Excellent machining on this, and if you flip this guy over and look underneath, it's another little uh, Easter egg under there. That's just another row of machining that's done brilliant. The hardware itself is, uh, you know, it is the shear go off, you know, proprietary bit. You can use you know, a screwdriver if you want. You can use a copper penny. Um, you can use, you know, a folded debit card or credit card. I wouldn't suggest using a screwdriver because you're going to mar the hardware. Mar means kind of damage it, and uh, it's unsightly once you start kind of playing with it. But honestly, a knife at this price point, like, I would expect this to be a great user. All day long, this would be a great knife. So, you know, if you're going to open it with a screwdriver, is it going to damage the value? Sure. But if it's going to be a user, is it going to get rubbed and damaged? Yeah, it might. So don't, don't stress out too much about it, but use a penny as well. Use a, uh, there's some other ways around things. Um, they also have the smaller one here, as you can see. It's a little bit smaller and it should be on the clip as well. Yep, same size. And it's interesting how they've uh, tightened this one in through the clip externally to internal, whereas some of the other ones, they do that uh, from the inside into the clip. So that's interesting why they did that. Should be pretty standard on the inside, not a ton of milling of any. Yeah, pretty standard on the F3. When you jump into the uh, F3 NSs, or the, I guess, like aquatic series, like the special edition F3 NSs, you see a little bit more milling on the scales inside, which is cool. Or on the frame, sorry. But for a price point knife, expect it to be pretty standard. It's built for durability. You've got some machining, and I'm looking at this now. I always say this, guys. What do we see as I roll this up? You see that lock bar that just pops up, and it's above the other side of the frame, which makes finding the lock bar super, super easy with your thumb. It's beveled, and if you even get closer, which I'm not going to do with my lens, or if you're in 4K, maybe you even already see it, but there's a crap ton of milling lines on that uh, 
on that lock bar, which just looks so good. You do have a lock bar insert, which in this case is usually a, an over travel stop, but I, I don't think it is in this case, unless there's something I can't see, which there may be. Um, the reason they put a lock bar, metal lock bar insert there is because you're tuning the materials between the titanium frame and the insert steel here. Uh, in this case, obviously Chromax, but LMAX, M390, S90V, whatever, uh, Magna Cut. Um, so by tuning that material, you can change the way a knife really feels. It runs on multi-row bearings, and this particular one is feeling crispy. Ooh. right out of the box. This is feeling incredible. Um, it's not uncommon that shear gorofs on multi-row bearings tend to feel a little dry at first for the first, you know, hundred or so flicks, and then they kind of break in. And I think it's because they're putting like a wax on the balls now versus oil. And uh, yeah, I just find they feel a little dry to start and then they break in real nice and smooth. Um, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I always complain about this bear being on the blade right in the way of the cutting path and the Chromax PM also being in the way of the cutting path. It's not a, it's not a crazy bad problem, um, but it is, it is nice if they put that elsewhere and, and there's branding. Like I know you guys want to see sure grow off on it. My preference personally is to have that on the handle somewhere down here, kind of like they did on the Stellaris, uh, which I'll pull that back out. But when they do that, um, you know, there, there's going to be money that comes with that. You know, bonding a titanium insert to a carbon fiber scale is going to cost money. So, you know, I, I, beggars can't be choosers because then I'll, the same knife would be another 100 or $200 more and then people wouldn't buy it. So, I get it. In terms of fit in hand, it's a masterpiece, the F3. It's fat. Let's, not be, on, let's be honest. It's a fat knife. It's a fatter knife. Um, but the clip because of the roll in it. There's no hot spot in your palm. Your finger finds the jimping on the blade real smoothly, real nice, no issue there. Okay, um, and then just the overall kind of like shape of the handle, like look how ergonomic that is. Deep, you know, fatter handle with a deep cutout. The flipper tab kind of molds into this nice big trigger kind of feel here where you're, it feels like you're holding like the, the handle of a gun almost like it's just locked and loaded. It's such a good feel on the F3. So natural. Um, if you've watched Metal Complex, um, the F3 NS, so the higher end version of this, um, is his favorite Shirogorov. And uh, it's not mine personally, like the F3 is a beautiful knife. I'm an F95 guy, which is essentially Shirogorov Sebenza. Um, I love F95. Um, but I can understand why, for the for the masses, he would recommend a knife like this. Because it's just beautifully done, and it's a really good entry point with a classic look. You know, like it's it, it looks like a Russian knife. And no one's going to complain. With a 4-inch blade this size, beautiful. You know, you do have some, a little bit more um, kind of edge work on the knife up top here, in front of the, the jimping. Um, and as you've seen here, the pattern is also matched, but a little bit in different sizes. That's kind of been a common theme I've seen lately on a lot of these. They've been matching the jimping and the backspacer. And just to show you that I'm not crazy, let's grab that blue hattie again and show what I'm talking about. See how the jimping and the backspacer patterns kind of match there? So it's a little different on the F3. And I don't have any F95Ts or quantums to show as well but anyway that would have been nice to match just because I think it'd look a little cooler but not the end of the world in terms of the, the profile she is a big one so originally when you look at this because they curve the edge of the blade here they do a lot of uh, machining that little edge there and then they stop and all of a sudden you see how thick the stock of this blade is she's big and usually you can tell how thick a blade is just by looking at the backspacer. And it's a fairly substantial backspacer. So it, it packs a lot of punch. Um, flat top so you can choke up on it and slide your finger down anywhere you want. Looks great. I really like it. 
And then this little profile to it is like almost like a standard Shirogorov mentality where it kind of swoops up to protect the handle. Love it. Makes a lot of sense. Love the choil. Just a great, uh, a great entry level into uh, into a terrific knife. And I think this green micarta, I, I personally, between the two, I think this looks nicer than the G10. But the G10 has LMAX, which is like, uh, you know, it's it's a name brand, right? So it's, uh, I don't know. Between the, between the two, you're not going to ever notice a difference between Chromax and LMAX. But, you know, LMAX has a little bit of a sexy factor to it. Uh, it's going to be perfectly centered. I haven't looked at this one, but it will be. The sure gore off. Some of the best production knives in the world. And the tolerances on this too, even for being G10, just nuts. Uh, the lanyard hole as well, now that I'm looking at this, you have a lanyard hole back here. Um, and from some of the knives from the sides, you have holes in it, like the Stellar, so the Stellar, in that you look through it and that is your lanyard hole. So let's grab my let's grab Stellar some more time. So you see how you can look through it and see the the hole in the back for the loop. It's a little unsightly. How they get around this on some of the modern Shiro's is they blend that into the backspacer. Here's the turtle. And they uh, they put that into the backspacer right on the tip. And I love how even on this production, they're doing the same technology. They're putting, it, putting it into the tip here. Just kind of hiding it away from the side. You don't even see it. But from the front, you see it beautifully well. And it's functional. Absolutely functional. And the fact that they're putting a backspacer, even though it's G10, it's not Thai or whatever, um, the fact they're even putting a, a backspacer on this is incredible because I would not complain even if it was a standoff. Like if you look at that entry level uh, F95 from Crazy Micarta that I showed earlier, right? This is an entry level F95. No backspacer. Standoffs instead. So how do they put a lanyard? Well, you have to attach it to one side and now the knife's no longer symmetrical and the world is over instantly. Just kidding. But, um, yes, it is cool to see it built into the backspacer. It's a good detail. Excellent user. Oof, fires out nice and smooth. Nice tuned detent, and that's because if you look at it, where's that flipper tab in relation to the center of the pivot? It's in front of it. So detent's going to feel strong. It's going to fire out nice and smooth, and uh, you're not going to have any problems. The grip on the backspacer as well in the, in the palm is grippy. Considering it's G10, you'd think it would be a little smooth. It's not. It's grippy, which I like. The tab behind, or sorry, behind the uh, flipper tab, you can see even on the frame here, they've done some milling. So that when you pull that back and it shoots out, your finger kind of falls. Let's see if I can do this without hitting the tripod here. <laughs> so when you pull this down, See how your finger has a nice smooth beveled place for it to fall? It's a nice detail, which they're putting on a lot of the knives lately. Inside the handle should say MRBS as well. I don't know, can you see that MRBS right in here? It shouldn't be on both sides, it should just be on the right side, usually. Yeah, it's on that side, MRBS. And if we compare that with single row bearings, they're very similar. Uh, same balls, typically. Um, but MRBS is, it tends to be on this one, I don't know, I haven't opened them, one of these up, but it should be three balls in a row in a pinwheel pattern, that's kind of like the rays of a sun, versus single row bearings are kind of a standard what you would think balls in a track. So, uh, in theory, it, you know, side to side torsion on the blade will, uh, kind of spread the load out better with MRBS, and it will control where you should, in theory, be able to put this at any point, and it's not going to fall, which is unreal. And then with a little bump, you can just see how it falls on its own there. It's very smooth and controlled and floats. The Shergroth, um, the world, they say the blades float home. And what that would mean is this. It just floats home. Instead of guillotine where it just drops. Like uh, something like this rask here. They tend to be very guillotine -y, right? So they'll just drop. Let's see if it can. 
right? I'm trying to move it away from that flipper tab, but they'll just fall on their own. And that's not a knock, it's that at uh, Grimm's Mill, they just, uh, that's the feel they're going for. And they do it very well. Very, very well, in fact. But otherwise, good fit in hand. Love the jimping. Blades, super friendly for slicing, uh, because you can cut and do some fine tasks with it. Multi-row bearings is terrific. You know, you have the G10 inlays that add a little bit of color to, you know, orange and micarta work so well together. Fits with the backspacer. Uh, I wish there was a little orange on the clip to kind of match, honestly, because you tend to do, you know, pivot collar, backspacer, and clip in most. Uh, it's kind of just a rule. The milling's through the roof on the clip, which we've already talked about. It's rounded, no hot spots. It's beautiful. On the inside, very little milling, if any, but there is some. Should be an easy one to work on. Multi-row bearings are just beautifully, beautifully smooth and consistent and uh, ready to take on whatever you can get. And uh, the fact that it's green micarta, it's going to wear in well. It's got good texture to it. It's not smooth. It's not sharp like the uh, like the G10. Whereas this tends to be a little more rigid, a little more... When you put your fingers on it, you can feel it really, uh, it really stops, right? So it's a, it's a sharp knife, in my opinion, for, for grip, but it's made for work. These are going to both be terrific kind of working knives and, and users, and uh, whoever, whoever gets either of these is going to be stoked because it's a great knife. It's a great value from Sheer Goroff. They're both equally smooth and, uh, and feel great, but I love the Micarta because it's going to slowly kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, almost like patina over time, if I can say that, because your hands are going to put some oil on it, your pocket, it's going to change colors a little bit, and it's going to show some personality. You know, the milling on it is incredible, and, and you can kind of start to see the rolls of it when I move the knife around like this, because you can kind of see they are rolling it, right? And shaping it, milling it. It's not just a flat piece of micarta. There's a lot of work that goes into these. And then the only vice that I have is the fact that they have Shiro on the blade, and I'd really like to have that elsewhere. And then Chromax, I'd like to have that right there instead on the blade. And that would be a, a great thing, but let's be honest, is it needed? No. Would it be cool? Sure. Would I find something else to complain about if it was there? Absolutely. Um, you know, the beauty of these knives are that they're so high-end that you can pretty well just complain about something and uh, they'll listen to it and probably adjust things or tell you to go away. But all, all, in all seriousness, it's a, it's a beautiful knife at a great price point. And if I'm looking for a user, a, a true user, it would be something like this. Um, but my personal favorite user right now... Um, if I were to buy one, would be that F95 NL. Because you get LMAX, you get full titanium, you get a little bit of perfectly imperfection on the micarta. And it's for me, I, I just love, I love the F95. But there's people who do not like the F95. There are people that say the Shirov F3 is by far the only knife they'll use from Shiro. So, uh, you know, it's a little, little fatter. Right, a little thicker, smoother on the uh, non-lock bar side, and and I guess the beauty of the the liner system, or if you want to call it that, is that you know the pressure of your hand doesn't get on the lock bar, and it's just consistently easy to open and close, and uh, just a piece of art. So there you go. That is the F3 Green Canvas Micarta. I didn't give you a weight as well, but I know that uh, I think they're like four and a half. 4.8, something like that. I may as well do that right now. I've got the scale here. Uh, they're not going to be at the low end of 4 or the high end of 3 because it's a 4-inch blade. And I can just tell it's uh, not the super, super light package of some of the other ones because there's no skeletonization, which is why it's got a thick blade for balance. I'm getting, what am I getting, 4.9? And I said four five four eight, eh, close enough four nine. I think in theory it's actually supposed to be four point eight. That's uh, that number's in my head. So there you go. It, it's not by any means 
heavy. It's just a tough, solid user. And I think people are going to love it. And that has some orange on it and uh, backspacer and all that. So there you go. All right, guys. Appreciate you stopping by and taking a look at the F3 Green Canvas Micarta. We'll talk to you later. And uh, check out bladezilla.ca. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok. And uh, leave a comment. Let's chat. And, you know, that's, that's the beauty of this is I love chatting with you guys. So, All right. See you later. Peace.